Caribbean. in the Caribbean. Pirates in the Caribbean. everyone welcome back to another episode of pirates and a caribbean yeah yeah today we have myself <laughs> you know what they're probably thinking i can hear this girl clapping her mouth sorry but oh, no, the packet request needs to finish soon asap I'm not gonna lie, there's quite a few i'm hungry we record on friday evening after work so been a rough week, first week back at school, do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, how's that? I've had a headache since Monday, but alhamdulillah it's gone now. I think it's because my body knew it was Friday. I woke up with it this morning. But you then, probably haven't been drinking enough water and you haven't slept pro- um, properly. Yeah. And I've been down in the coffee, typical teacher. All I need is a fag in my right hand and I'm I'm set. I actually haven't had coffee today. Well, you are now. Mm. Is it a Christmas drink? What is it? Oh. No, it's just it's just Christmas packaging. Christmas drinks are back. Mm-hmm. Christmas festive spirit and that. You know what I mean? Do you like pumpkin spice things? Mm-mm. Me neither. I hate pumpkin spice. I have pumpkin can- pumpkin pumpkin spice candles in my house though. I like anything pumpkin. You know, I've become that chick now. Mm. Not pumpkin spice drinking things, as in buying shit for my house. Oh, excessively. I think that's amazing. I do that, folks. Oh my gosh! It's the best, it's the thing best ever. type of shopping I've ever experienced. Soon you're not even going to be shopping for clothes no more. I mean, we haven't reached that point yet. You're just going to be shopping for now. I'm shopping somebody else's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be shopping for unnecessary, not even candles. It's like, oh, you know, maybe I could do this new cutlery or yeah, honestly. Oh, yeah. maybe I need a new, you know. But right whatever. now, I'm a candle queen. And candle queen and the, I, I quite like the smell of some of the pumpkin spice candles can you grab the tissue for me please why oh, is that too much tissue of mm. course i just don't like the um taste of pumpkin spice um, i remember i tried the pumpkin spice thank you in starbucks mm-hmm. i didn't like it it's too sweet yeah i haven't i haven't even tried it i i was a toffee nut latte chick and then I think they sugar, the sugar tax, sugar tax, or something did something to that. Don't take it, don't bang it. They changed the syrup, yeah, in my opinion. What are you guys' favorite um, Christmas drinks? I'm talking to the audience. Are you know some people that just do hot chocolate vibes? But every year, like different shops have different types of hot chocolate. Like Costa always comes out with like some gatto Costa, black Costa. What about it? It's trash. It's all right. No, 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 no. Costa coffee is water. Mm. Their, their coffee is so... It is absolutely... I, I'm not a fan of Costa. At all. No. It's bottom tier. But I'm not going to lie to you. Starbucks, I don't think, is all that as well. Starbucks isn't all that. It's just no. the name. I just I go there because Cafe Nero is better. Yeah, 100%. The independent coffee shops are better. Oh, yeah, they're the best. Do you know what I mean? But Cafe Nero is better than Starbucks. Yeah. I just go to it because it's literally around the corner from my house. Yeah, that's about it. So reward system ain't even, don't even slap like it used to. I actually do miss working for Starbucks though. Hmm? I miss working for Starbucks. I bet you do, mate. Just walking in and getting drinks. <laughs> I miss working for Starbucks. It was the good old days. But I told my students that my first job was in McDonald's and it's the most fun I've ever had in my life. And they were like, what? I said, it is the most fun job I've ever had working in McDonald's. Mm-hmm. It was so fun. Anyway, how was your week? But the times have changed, right? No, you can't, yeah, people can't even imagine. Like, you try to tell one of them to work in McDonald's now, they'll be like, ill. But then they'll end up working, working in McDonald's. It's so only I mean, when they get to they the want to be working they're in like work. maybe JD or like. But JD back in the day, now JD is poverty. People just wanted to work there for the for the for prestige the, and the that's status. That's what I was about to say. Was so rubbish. People want to work there for the the the, the, the thingy, the benefits. Yeah, and also people like I'm not gonna lie. I used to want that. Like, I wanted that JD uniform. The full of uniforms and all that though. That one was better. But like when you see someone walking around with like JD on their back, like with the, like when you know when we all worked in that shopping center and that you're younger. Mm. The JD people like, but meanwhile they were on less money than me. Yeah. So. Nah, bro. But yeah, nah. I had a good week. I was ill this week. <clears throat> Luggies. 
But yeah, I'm back. I'm better. Alhamdulillah. Do you mean I'm feeling much better? I feel like this week kind of. I don't know. It was a weird week. Well, it was weird for me because I went back to work. I was distraught. But outside of that, it was fine. It's a weird week and it's November and I feel like I've got such a busy November. Oh, excuse me. Do you know what it is? I was actually having this conversation with my friend today and we were talking about, you know, like when you've got a lot of things planned and stuff. I'm not the type of person that writes things down. I don't do calendars. So you, I don't you do, probably double and triple booked yourself. Like, I find it really difficult to write things down mm. because I'll write something down and I'll never look at that piece of paper ever again. Just use the calendar on your phone. I'll never, I won't go back on it, babes. Uh, well, like, if I sit there and say to you, oh, let me put it in my calendar, I'm trying. But you set an alert. It will remind you. Yeah, but that's it. It's not like one of those things where it's like, oh, what are you doing on Thursday? Oh, let me check. Nah. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? If I say to you, let me put it in my calendar, I'm just saying it for banner. <laughs> It's just in the spur of the moment kind of situation. I actually have to use mine. I, I don't... I never look back at pieces of papers. No, no, not written down. I used to use a physical planner when I was younger. I actually tell people, let me get out of my diary and I'd actually get out. But you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. 2023, trying to be good, right? So I already bought my diary. I already <laughs> bought, I already bought my, my diary. 2023, I'm not going to lie. What do you plan to do with them? I don't know. Just, do you know what I mean? Be more... Do you know what I mean? You know planner companies, yeah? <laughs> they are biggest money. scammers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know I how many people have planners in their house that they never use? My planner doesn't even reach February. Let's <laughs> <laughs> January, I'm acting brand new and bougie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's use the one on your phone. Let me see. But I don't really... No, I bought one. Well, my brother bought me one. Um, How big is it? It's not big. It's like them A5. Okay, so it can fit in most of your bags. Yeah. So it's one of those ones where, I, you know, I'm trying to take, you know more serious steps in life so like <laughs> i'm trying to you know i've got a lot of things that you know what's so funny yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> what's funny is that like you said like we say to ourselves that like, i'm gonna be more like, i've got i've got more plans i've yeah. got more plans that like, you know and the first thing is to buy a planner yeah, because I would. I feel like do you know what it is there's so many people that say when you write something down and you can visually see it it's more because it, it, like you print you imprinted it in your head now right mm. so it's like it's more real in a way mm. do you get yeah. what i'm trying to say but then for me it's like i i i make mental notes of certain dates mm. and i don't forget dates mm. right i like to think my memory's quite good right mm. so i make these mental notes of these specific dates especially when it's like a big thing mm. yeah and i don't forget i would never double book myself on that mm right but it's little things like if i'm going to an event it's like oh damn i've double booked myself mm. do you get it so the whole point of the, the the whole point of the diary is for me to just write down things that i'm doing when i'm doing it the timings that i'm doing it just to be a little bit more organized on paper rather than just because i'm organized but it's chaos <laughs> it's organized chaos in my head mm. so I guess I'm trying to, you know, put things down on paper. I'll see how it goes. Well, I've tried it before. You know, it's what about mean? resilience. I, but then exactly because I feel like sometimes I've told myself it doesn't work, so I just don't attempt to do it again mm. until the new year comes, and then I want to do new year, new me, and all of that. Do mm. it. Then I go buy a planner, and it's like plan out some new pens to fill it in with and ship. Yeah, fancy pen and color whatnot. code. Yeah, and you know when you buy Highlighters. a diary, you don't just buy any diary. You know, you buy a really. <laughs> It's yeah, diary. I'm not that person. I am the notepad person on your phone. No, as in I have oh. lots of notepads, mm-hmm. ones with little slogans on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm, I'm her. Every school term, every new school year, new notepad, new teacher planner. You know how many times I've written in my teacher planner this year? Once. Did you write in your notepad? The problem is, is that I write in ten different notepads. Every day, different notepad, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll be like, where did I put? Mm. Where did I put? And then it's a new day. You can't find it. You start a new one. Or you just pick up a random notepad that you see. And then I'll be like, I need one for, like, my home life. And then, like, th- these ones can be for work. And the next thing, one day I'll bring my home one to work by accident, start writing in that. Then t- yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you find that when you mix a notepad, yeah? I don't want it anymore. 
No, not only that, like you leave a couple pages of gap in between, so it makes it look like it's a new number. <laughs> no. Is that just me? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's just you. I was going for a good game. Well, I, I do that. No, Maybe I'm you need the like, notepads that have the dividers. I don't no, know. no. Maybe I need to stop buying notepads. Maybe finish notepad. <laughs> never. I've <laughs> never. I've never. Maybe try and finish notepad. Anyways, <laughs> moving on from notepads. I know, but we are getting to that time of year, do you know what I mean? When they start thinking about New Year's resolutions and that. Yeah, I don't make them, but yeah. I, I make them. I, whether I, you know, go through with it or not, that's a whole other conversation. But um, I make them. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe my next New Year's resolution is to cut down on Netflix. I don't know. I watch way too. I watch too much shows. I haven't finished loving but love is blind after we was chatting, chatting, chatting on the last episode. But I did see obviously Raven and AK. That's okay. S- <laughs> <laughs> she said AK. <laughs> SK. Um. But then, do you know what I did? What? So somebody I was follow. So I, when I get involved in these kinds of shows, I don't look people up on Instagram. Oh, I yeah. do not. Where are they now? I'm that person. So somebody that I follow reposted Zainab. Yeah. And she wrote some long piece of essay on Instagram to Cole. Mm. Um, which made me have an inkling that she didn't marry him. Mm. Um, or maybe that he didn't marry her. I don't know which way around it went. Um, but then I then clicked on her story and saw that they had been filming the reunion. The reunion's out, yeah. Then I went. Then you know when you spiral out of control. Now, now she's tagged Raven. So, so then I went to, to Raven and I've seen that her and SK are actually together. Yeah. In real life. Oh, have now. you seen the I do bit? I saw him say I don't to her, and okay. that's the last thing I saw. Okay. Um, what I didn't like what he did. Yeah. Obviously, they've since gotten together and are with each other. But in the moment when I watched it, when I thought it was done and dusted for good, what I didn't like was when he said he doesn't and then they kind of spoke to him like separately. Mm. All of the things he brought up are things that he kind of pretended that he was okay with. He had... He he shared a few of those concerns, though. The only one I feel like was like... A big one was like the, the family the move, thing. And also moving to... The, and also it was a bit about, I think, where... When he was meeting the friends, mm. right? And those two friends and the whole interrogation or whatever that was, right, was a bit questionable anyways. Um, but that incident as well when, you know, I think it was him that was going to California. Mm-hmm. And she was... I don't even know where she's staying, but she's staying wherever she's staying. Texas. Um, and, you know, the whole the whole fact the fact that she wasn't even willing to you know compromise or meet him halfway Mm -hmm. and even when she said to him you know if we get married and like you're living there you're still going to basically pay for the rent Mm -hmm. which is a bit cool for some people that's cool but for some people that's a bit wild Well, he's going to be a broke student so that's right because he's not so for him it's like she didn't even come across like you know she was trying to meet me halfway with everything and at that time he shared some concerns i think Maybe he didn't share as many to no, he her. Didn't. No, he didn't. But what he shared concerns when you know when they ask you things, mm. and you're speaking to the, the yeah, whoever's but behind the camera. To but to her, he kind of was just not even brushing them under the carpet. He just wasn't responding to them. Yeah, because I think he just wanted her. Mm. But I liked her mum. His mum. I, I, do you know what it is? I didn't. I was not a fan of them at first mm. because I didn't understand her, and I felt like he was a bit too. I felt like he was just trying to be agreeable. Like, I don't understand where you... Like, do you like her? Do you not like her? Are you open? Are you not open? Do you speak? Do you not speak? Mm. Like, are you confident? Are you not... Like, I Mm. didn't really... I couldn't understand him. I couldn't figure him out. Yeah. Do you get it? Like, are you here for the real deal or what? Whereas with her was like... Do you actually genuinely like this guy? Because... And maybe I'm just judging because she doesn't come across like... She would have picked someone like him. she doesn't. Off of, like... His mm-hmm. physical appearance, but um, we're kind of growing on me now. Well, they seem to have grown on each other, so they're growing on me now. Um, I need to watch the rest, but yeah, I haven't been able to watch. And you've it. seen Alexis, Alexis, um, Alexis family. 
that was very scary. But they the they were like Kardashians. Yeah, I feel like he's very yes man. Yeah, he literally just wants to marry. He just wants he's to marry. A yes man. Yeah, to marry her. And she's definitely gonna duff him up. Like she's gonna she's, one day she's gonna come home and be like, "You didn't hoover the floor." But watch the reunion. Both the back. reunion's quite interesting. Yeah, I do want to see the reunion. I, I do want to see the rest of the things. Mainly for Cole and Zainab. They're a very strange couple. A very strange couple. She is toxic. But anyways... She is. And I, but did you see her thing on Instagram? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. There's... Do you know what? I just I'm not going to lie. I've just been stalking S- Miss Skinner, S- I think she's got, like, some serious issues. Her level of insecurity has taken so much control of her life... That is actually pretty dangerous. But I think it's because she's South Asian and white, I assume. Mm. Um, and her parents both died when she was young. Okay. I don't know where she's from. Yeah. And then the woman that took her on is a white lady. She seems to associate heavily with white people. Um, I think she's just insecure because she doesn't look like the people around that's around her. So she's always kind of compared herself to white people, in which case she's never gonna, she's never gonna match, um, because even her mum, the woman that's raising her, yeah, yeah, that took her in, um, was saying to Cole, like that she used to say things like that when she was younger, and also the fact that Cole's family haven't met her, that adds on to that as well. Do you get yeah. it? Because you know. I think one of the main reasons why they haven't met her is because they couldn't picture someone like her with him. But also they didn't agree with the lifestyle of living together before marriage yeah. because they're really religious. His family, yeah. But then it was like, there's certain things that, you know, like stood out for her based on the reasons why his family didn't want to meet her. And all she was focused on was because of her appearance. Because for her, she's gone through for her whole life being like, oh, look at all these white people I'm around and I don't look like them. Yeah, she she needs to she needs to take time first and foremost. Um, she needs to take time because she well, needs to actually you know figure out who she is. But what else you been watching on Netflix? So I've been watching. Um, it's not on Netflix, but I've been watching this other show now. Mm-hmm. Apparently, TikTok has taught me this show. TikTok, Where's that where you learn it from? TikTok has taught me a lot of stuff. But anyways, um, <laughs> you sound like the kids at work. <laughs> tiktok because it's this american show right and it's like this kid you know he's a black kid he's into nfl uh-huh. you know he's trying to be a F- professional <coughs> nfl player and stuff it's quite interesting though because when you see <coughs> the kids oh, wow. right and you know the age that they play mm. 17 18 absolute lies number one but well, you don't feel they're that age impossible why because they're so big and and I've obviously done some background research on some of the carrots. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> this is your figures. Do you start getting on the Googles? I, don't you do that though? So I do that every time when I finish a show. It's like where are they? I'm the person that will go. I on do Google. that for my six hundred pound life because I like where to find are out they if now? my little homies are Did still alive. Did you see the TikTok video that I sent you the other day? Just an FYI, my six hundred pound life is one of my favorite shows. Uh, carry on. So basically, it was, you know, they're all in their 30s. 30, 31. One of them is like 35 and she's playing an 18 year old. Oh, it's fake. Yeah, it's fake. I thought it was a reality no, show. No, 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 no. The storyline is, is oh. kind of. Se- no, it's an actual. The storyline is based on a, you know. Kind okay, of like sorry. A I'm back. I'm back in the game. I'm back in the game. Right? So the storyline is based on a true story. Mm. It's a boy. He lives in, you know, Crenshaw. Um, you know with his mom and his little brother mm-hmm. and then you know he's trying to make it out of the hood he wants to become a professional player um, I don't want to say too much about you know the storyline but <coughs> anyways he moves to Beverly Hills you know to go into these top schools and you know wants to become a professional NFL player and stuff right mm-hmm. <coughs> I haven't finished the show I'm still watching it but what was interesting was the bit that I'm on now is you know so the reason why he went to Beverly Hills was to make it yeah. right you know, to get out the hood, quote yeah. unquote hood, and you know, his mom and his, you know, his dad wasn't around, mm-hmm. right? But what was interesting was the fact that he then felt like 
there was a part of him that owed it to Crenshaw. So when he won the first league or the season, I don't even know what it mm-hmm. is, right? He went to Beverly Hills and, you know, they won. Yeah. Right? Mainly because of him. Yeah. So now he feels like, you know, he owes it to his old team to go back. And win with them. And win with them. Right? Mm-hmm. So now this team, the Beverly Hills team, feels like, you know, he's a traitor. Mm-hmm. Because now you're going back to, you know, yeah. you're saying Beverly Hills is your past. But we kind of, you know, not made we've you helped you elevate are, but you. We basically, yeah. yeah. And then now he's going back to them. Yeah. And, you know, it was the constant battle because when he moved to Beverly Hills, he had that same reaction from them. Oh, you know, you think you're better than us and yada, yeah. yada, yada. And then he went there and then he was an outsider when he went to Beverly Hills. And now he's going back. He yeah. Like, you know, he now... But yeah, like I was He's saying, what was in interesting both worlds. was the fact that he felt like he had to go back to do something for his community and to take them to the final. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And it's kind of interesting because it's how did like... They, how did they feel? Did they pressure him into that? To come back. Did they make him feel like he had to do it? No. No. So okay. he's only... The bit that I'm on now is he's only come back now. Right? So now he's back and, you know, he's, you know playing games and stuff but they haven't actually won yet but when right? he was like but, away all his old friends and stuff in like crenshaw or whatever whatever were they first it was a bit they had a bit of a hostile relationship because okay. it was like you know you, you think us. you're better than us you've left us now you're part of the beverly hills crew this yeah. and that you know when they you know when they do that whole thing mm. and then it's like he had people where he grew up with when he was from a very young age that he weren't talking to he's getting to fights when he comes back and it's oh, like wow it's all of this that People hold against you when you're trying to make it. Yeah, when you're trying to make it. I was going to say elevate, but that sounds a bit mad. But you know when you're trying to make it and you're trying to change something for yourself and your family, people don't seem to understand that sometimes. And it's like, oh, you think you're better than us. Or it's like, now that you've made it, why don't you, you know, come back and help us? Or why don't you take us with you? Or you've now forgotten us. You've forgotten where you've come from. You've forgotten your roots. You've forgotten this. You've forgotten that. And it's just a bit mad. Yeah, I think even like a lot of rappers talk about stuff like that with like the whole kind of thing of like taking your people with you when you get on. People feel like they kind of have to be a part of it because they've been with you for X amount of years. Mm. And that's why you see like back in the day, you would see rappers with like entourages of like 30 people um, and, you know. 20 of them have got guns and if you come near that rapper they'll just blow your head off type of thing and over time you hear a lot of the older rappers talking about like they had to cut people off and stuff like that but even that is dangerous that's the problem sometimes it will literally be your own people who will turn back around Mm -hmm. and be the one to take your life because you left you quote unquote left them behind Mm -hmm. after they helped you and for some people they didn't necessarily help you they were just about and that's fine but that, that does that, put it this way, yeah. Let's imagine you became really successful in uh, fashion, mm. yeah, and you opened up a fashion house. You started a, an amazing business. You became extremely successful in the realm of fashion. You became a multi-millionaire, right? Inshallah. Ooh, okay. And then mm. people like us are like, well. No, now you need to you, ha- you need to have me a, have me on a salary, and and pay. Like I'm, I've been your friend for years, <laughs> but that's what happens. Yeah, to no, rappers. no, it's true. It's true. They start true. having to put people around them on a salary for literally hanging with them yeah. for the day. Do you know what I mean? And people become entitled to their success and their wealth, and it's like that's how a lot of people end up broke before they even really experience success because they're paying out for everyone who's around them every day. Yeah, because now they feel like it's their duty. They owe somebody something. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, yeah, you know, you was, okay, by my side or whatever, you know, this idea of, you know, I've now become, I'm now in the position where I can bring you up, right? And respectfully, if you can bring something to the table, of course. Yeah, do you know what but I mean? Not just for just but being there. I'm not going to bring you in just for the sake of bringing no. you in, right? You can be with me and you know learn or whatever, or just hang with me as my friend, but yeah. not as someone who I need to now put on a salary purely because you're my friend. But that's what happens to so many people, and if you don't 
people get upset and start feeling like again oh you've you know you've left us now you've blah uh-huh. blah blah and it's again it's that kind of entitlement it's like and I, I guess when everybody's coming from you know some level of poverty when somebody becomes like the shining star and you know also sometimes the people aren't even necessarily that wealthy but when you've got almost nothing or you're just your average joe somebody having one million is gonna feel you're like wealthy enough is gonna feel like raw like you could do so if much you for me. don't have if you have more than i have you're wealthy enough to me yeah do you know what I mean? especially considering someone if i didn't have anything yeah do you exactly. know what i mean if i didn't have anything and you can afford to have a because even on the show right his mom she could barely make ends meet Mm-hmm. Right, she was raising him by himself, by herself. Mm-hmm. The dad wasn't about, um, so it's like he's also trying to. But then it's it's one of those things again. He's also now trying to, you know, he puts himself on a pedestal and he's now puts it put himself in a position where he feels like he has to get his mom out of the hood. He has to get his mom out of the ghetto. He has to be the one that makes it yeah. in order for the whole community to make it. Yeah, right. And it's like. She could barely make ends meet. So it's whenever he got money, he'd be coming buying a fridge full of food. Yeah. Right? And it's like for the regular neighbor next door, they don't even they can't even, you know, pay their bills. So they're seeing you as someone who's trekking to Beverly Hills. You're living in Beverly Hills. And they automatically, automatically think you're, rich. you're rich. But that's like people back home think that we're automatically rich. Automatically you're rich. People back at home think that we're rich just because we live in England. Matter of fact, they're more richer than us, but Yeah. <laughs> and that's why they will ask you for outrageous things. They will tell you to buy them an iPhone 14. Bruh. Yeah. Even I ain't got no iPhone 14. Yeah. Because they they genuinely believe that we are rich. Yeah. And and, and that's the thing. It's because you you've literally made it out. You know and I mean? that's what I'm saying. So even with him, it's like now his dad then comes back into the picture, uh, right? But then his dad, who was never there, his dad who was never there. But then, but then his dad never left for the reasons, uh, for the reasons that you think he would have left. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like his dad hasn't come back because. Well, anyways, my my th- my opinion. Anyways, he didn't okay. come back for what you would think he came back for because his dad was an NFL player himself. Okay. He wasn't pro. I think he was pro actually. But anyways, his dad was an NFL player as well. Mm. Do you get it? But something happens, so his dad left and whatever, and then his dad comes back, and then now he's like, oh, you know, you now coming back because you know your son's gonna make it, basically. Yeah. Is that what you're coming back for? And it's like, there's so many people out there who speak about it. I, even when I was watching Stormzy's um, interview with, <coughs> I've forgotten his name. Chucky. No, it wasn't Chucky. It wasn't Chucky. But even when I was watching that, Stormzy's talking about how, you know, he, his dad wasn't around. Mm. Right? And then he, Lewis. Lewis his, what? his dad wasn't around. Right? Mm. And, you know, his dad came, popped back into his life and basically asked him for money. I think it was for, you know, to help him buy a new car because his dad was a taxi, taxi man or something. But it was like, your whole life you've ignored this person now that this person has made it you're entitled to their success you've now come back into the picture because this is your son and you're in your 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 what and did stormzy buy in the cab i don't think he did at the time but i bet you but i think he probably has and this is this is the problem i think with parents (laughs) not like obviously that's like a blanket statement but i think that generation it's mad how they will literally do something like be an absentee parent for your entire life and then probably start receiving text messages and stuff saying isn't that your son isn't that your son and have the audacity Mm. to contact you and ask you for funds for anything you shouldn't even ask me for money for toilet roll Mm. because you haven't actually been present in my you abandoned me Mm. but i think that that generation and i don't know if it's just an ethnic minority thing i I can't really speak on white people i'm not really sure but i feel like it probably is the same is is this idea of because somebody is your parent 
you should allow them to do certain things to you or to treat you in a certain way and you always have to forgive them because they are your parents like some people would look at that and be like oh but Stormzy's got bare money like just give his dad the taxi it's, it's not, not that gonna deep. make a difference it's not gonna make a yeah. difference it's gonna have a big impact on his life like it's like you not giving him that now is not gonna change the fact that he wasn't there for you when he was younger you can't change that time blah blah, blah. And it's like but if I had not become Stormzy would this man have looked for me? When I didn't have anything and my mum was breaking her neck to provide for it's him and his sister, right? Mm. My dad wasn't there. So why should I now provide for him? He's got, he got gotten by just fine without me. He didn't look for me. Why should I have to look after him? No, I, I, I hear you. It's wild because it's like, you know, you've made it this far without me. You know, you don't necessarily, you haven't felt like you needed me and, you know, as much as, you know, my mum was working two, three jobs, whatever. You didn't made care. it, Right? And now we're in a better position. I don't know. I get what you're saying. It's like this entire woman that parents have, but shouldn't they? No, because you haven't been a parent. And I think that's why it depends on what you see a parent as. You know, being biologically somebody's parent and being a parent is like an active parent is not the same. Yes, you that can't whole be entitled to my anything if you haven't been an active parent. Don't 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 post my graduation picture <laughs> on on your Facebook when I haven't spoken to you for five <laughs> years. Don't do that. Don't go around telling people, "Oh, my child has a this or that." No, no, no. Your child doesn't have anything. When was the last time you spoke to your child? You, His dad should even have the cheat to be told to people, "Oh, my son is my son is stormzy." <laughs> and to me I just feel like we need to put an end to this kind of nonsense like people parents like that shouldn't they should feel ashamed but I don't think we shame people for that kind of stuff enough yeah I've, I've yeah when it <laughs> comes to entitlement I don't think people are shamed enough whether it's you know family friends relationships or work whatever it is people have entitlement yeah but the thing is i don't know Uh, yeah for me parents i just feel like there's there's no real sometimes for a lot of parents there's no real boundary in with regards to entitlement they will literally like you hear of people's parents like demanding ridiculous sums of money from them for nothing or people's parents you know invading their homes (laughs) literally like having no boundaries all of those kind of stuff i'm just not i don't know like maybe i'm too westernized i don't know even like the other day well yesterday to be fair i was watching um love and hip-hop atlanta i keep forgetting there's like 25 different love and hip-hops i can't believe you actually still watch that and you know it's on its 10th season i don't even remember the last time i watched that show you know me i watch all the ratchet televisions love after lockup was leveled up we now have love before lock up game changer while they're still in the jail jail honey <laughs> game changer um but basically scrappy and his mom mama d which again you know even the fact that these mums on on love and hip-hop mm-hmm. mama d or what was jim jones's mama called um, mama jones yeah <laughs> like even then she was something she, else right but even them, they are they are prime examples of entitled parents oh, yeah, yeah, who yeah, haven't yeah, necessarily yeah, yeah. done the best job, right? And Mama D. But there's a difference though, because there's the ones that haven't been present and they've got entitlement. These yeah. ones, they're present and they're outrageous. Present. <laughs> they're present and they're entitled, and they're entitled because it's like, but their entitlement is like on a whole nother level yeah. because I've been present, right? So basically. Scrappy told his mum something not on the show. He confided in her, as people do, in their parents, and told her that because of the problems he's having in his marriage with Bambi, he's going to file for divorce. That did not happen on screen. Mm. We did not see that. So that was a private conversation. It was a private conversation, not for the show. Yeah. She then came onto the show, and I think, to be honest with you, again, it does... There are some concerns to be raised with regards to like exploiting people who are maybe substance abusers or maybe have mental illness Mm. because I feel like his mum doesn't have a place in the show unless she is trying to rattle his life. Mm. And I think that VH1 use her for that purpose. 
because her only place on the show is to rattle his life. Yeah, it's to cause chaos. He doesn't chaos. have any... Yeah, it's to cause chaos for him. Mm. She doesn't have a place on the show unless she's causing chaos in his life. So she basically linked up with someone who, in the grand scheme of things, isn't even her friend. And in front of the cameras, basically said, my son told me he's filing from divorce, filing for divorce um, because she's given him too much problems or whatever, whatever. But she basically told the girl's friend that. So the girl's friend went back and Bambi's friend went back to her and told her, listen, sat down with Mama D. Don't know if you know, but you're getting a divorce. Basically, like your husband's filing for divorce or he's already filed for divorce. So she first heard it from her friend. Who heard it from his mum. But on camera. On camera. Yeah. So things spiraled out of control. They got into argument, whatever, whatever. But basically what ended up happening is he apparently called his mum and cussed his mum out. But then again, on camera she came she she was on the mic she was talking about how my son spoke to me like i'm a dog in the street <laughs> rare rare but then basically i felt really sorry for him because he ended up having like an emotional breakdown on national television he was literally screaming and crying and basically saying to his mum like you you you've never been a good mum you've like you've always been outrageous like you've never been normal i've never had a normal parent mm. like you're unhinged like i told you something in confidence and you made my life television like i didn't tell you that so that you could go and tell other people this is my actual rule like that's his wife they have three children together like as much as it's a reality tv show that's actually his wife that's like not like hey hey it's a joke we're married but for jokes mm-hmm. like we're actually married and for her to do that he was basically like just expressing how like i should be able to trust you as a mum he just started going off about all sorts of different things like him and his sister seeing things obviously they grew up in their house was the trap house so their home life was not normal they would come home from school and see people shooting up in the living room uh the mum also ran the house like a brothel so she had prostitutes that worked Mm. for her um so like his bedroom would be in use by customers wow you know so they didn't have a normal life Mm. she definitely failed that's not normal you don't raise children in a trap house Mm. yeah uh but basically he just absolutely lost it and he he did he dragged his mum and obviously people are kind of discussing it like did he go too far should we ever disrespect our parents like that or was it about time that he he said what needed to be said and i feel like those kind of conversations only really happen obviously the way that the way that it all came out was you know not nice he was throwing shit he was screaming he was swearing all sorts of things but should we be allowed to call out our parents check our parents say to them well actually you didn't do this right and you've you've caused me some some damage in my adult life should we be able to do that um no <laughs> I, I honestly i don't know honestly it's the way you said uh, honestly because i don't know i don't know it's just i i, I think obviously i'm coming from a cultural place yeah where I'm, I'm coming from my answer is purely based on culture and religion it's a no right however but based on religion right? you have rights You're, you have yeah, rights you over have your rights over your parents 100 percent do you get what I'm trying to say? But I think it, it, it it's the mannerism. Oh, no, no, the way he did it. Right? No, 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 no. No, but that's what I'm <laughs> no, saying. It's like majority of the time when someone's trying to G-check or, you know, whatever. Call out or their parents whatever. parents or whatever, yeah. The mannerism is just so off, right? And more times it's because it's led up. Yeah, it's, it's built, built up. up. It's years. built up, sorry. It's been built up over years and now they've just had enough. Yeah right that's definitely what they've happened just had enough with with scrappy he's had it up to like yeah like come on and yeah. you know what was sad even at the end after he went mad on her you could tell that he felt bad because then he started saying like oh i love you mom like you helped me with my rap career like you gave me money for my rap career i think he felt bad for like for the way, he, the way the way of course the way it was the way it was you know the way he lashed out was, you know, I'm pretty sure he regrets it. On top of the fact that it was being recorded, right? So that makes things ten times worse. Yeah. Right? And it's like he's, you know it's anger the way he's handling the situation. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I don't know. I, I feel like me personally, I would say no, but I even can if it's done in the right way can, in a conversation. I can, I can understand why 
people would want to have those conversations or why they would want to challenge certain things that their parents told them right and i don't think there's anything wrong with challenging people on certain things especially when it comes to certain questions or when someone tells you to do something and you don't understand why you're doing it you want to challenge that i fully understand that Mm. right i just feel like some things need to be handled a little bit more delicately yeah let's take out how he behaved because throwing things shouting and swearing isn't helpful right but let's let's take that out do you think as adults you know when because they're both adults in the situation he's a grown man that you should be able to tell your parent like call out your parents on things that they did years prior that have caused you pain okay when you say call them out why can't what 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 do you mean because them down and say mom dad yeah because if i hear call them out on it for me that sounds like you're g-checking them to be honest, our parents will receive it as a G check regardless. <laughs> no, but they you could write a four page if you letter, want to sit down, put you a know, rose you, wrapped up in it, and let's talk about it. If you want to sit down and you want to have a conversation, you know, there's a dialect and you guys are communicating back and forth. But ultimately, you're accusing them of something. Oh. Um, so it is, that is basically what you're saying to them. Back yeah, in 1994, when you mm, did this, I don't know. It hurt me. So either way, they're going to perceive it as a G check, especially our parents' generation. You know, sitting them down and telling them they did something wrong yeah but it, mm, i don't know that's a big one for them of course john chance of course they, they're never gonna i don't know i don't know you don't know if we should be able I to i don't know would you would want you, your child would you? would you want your child to feel comfortable to tell you that you, they hurt you hurt their feelings <laughs> Is that how this i mean <laughs> i mean yeah I'm not okay. I mean, I don't know. I feel like times have changed, right? So if mm. I'm looking at it from my parents and me, mm. right? I'd probably say no. I wouldn't I wouldn't sit them down maybe. Right? But then like I said, times have changed. Mm. So my child, you know, sitting me down, I'd probably say yes to that. Right? Because Obviously, you know, my parents were raised in a certain way. They've raised me in a certain manner. You know, they've there's a lot of things that take to, that you got to take into consideration, right? You know, the way they were brought, the circumstances they came to the country in and all of that stuff, mm. right? There's all of those differences between me and my parents. Mm. Whereas me and my child might have a little more similarities. Mm. So it, it changes things. The co- it, it changes the dynamics of the whole conversation and, and how they might, you know, translate it to me and how I might, you know, understand it. It, it, mm. it. It's a bit more different. Yeah, it's big, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like maybe my child's sitting me down and they say to me, oh, you hurt my feelings. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's calm down, but okay. What do you mean, let's calm down? How mm. about, that's because a nice like, to put yeah, it. Because it's like, because it's like, I don't know, for me sometimes, the way I see certain things is like, regardless of whether it's my parents or my child or my friend, yeah, Sometimes it's one of those things where it's like, if someone says to me, you hurt my feelings, I can respect that. And I can take that on board because that's your feelings, yeah? I can never, you know, dismiss your feelings, right? But on the back of my mind, sometimes it's like, you know that wasn't my intention. Right. But I think when it's a parent-child relationship, there's a power dynamic that's there that doesn't exist with friendship necessarily. And I think... But even parents. whether it's somebody's intention or not, some parents have deeply scarred their children and they didn't intend to. I get that. Right? So does intention matter in terms of um that person being able to voice that they were hurt by by their parents' actions? Because for some people they ca- they're literally walking around with that daily. They're walking around with that carrying that and they never get a chance to say it to their parents because they're too scared. And then they live their life taking it out on other people. So what'd you do? Because I don't know. I've had I've had I've had good conversations with my mum. Um about how she's behaved about or how she's things. treated you or how she's, you know, 
handled a certain situation or yes but then again we've bantered it i've never actually like mum we need to talk no but that's what i'm saying i've never done that delivery do you know what i mean and all i've that never stuff, done right? that we've bantered it as like a family Would you sit her down i don't think i need to now mm. i think i could sit my mum down i definitely think i could but do you do, think you, okay okay do you think you should sit her down I don't think I'm in a sh- I'm, I'm in a need for I don't I don't think I need to, but I think people who do need to should sit their parents down, and I think our parents' generation need to just accept that some they're gonna have to have some uncomfortable conversations because a lot of them sometimes through no fault of their own, and sometimes through fault of their own, have <laughs> have have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, change the finger that that ring is on immediately. Oh, I had to. I had um, to. It got stuck. Have, but, um, you know, caused some serious damage to their children that, you know, they need to answer for. And, and, and a lot and, of time they don't answer and, and I agree, but I feel like sometimes, uh, like you were saying, sometimes with ethnic parents, it's, it's hard to communicate or translate specific emotions that you want. There's a lot of things that they don't understand, or they don't register. <laughs> yeah, but you can right? try. You can try, but sometimes 100%. they might make you feel even worse. A hundred percent. But the thing is, it. the thing is, that's the thing though. Sometimes it's it's hard because you might be in a position where it's like, is there any point? You might get, you know, you might stress what you're trying to say, and then this person's just not understanding you. That might get you a little bit more frustrated, and you're thinking, is there any point? Why did I even bother bringing this up? Yeah, right. I know someone who tried to sit their parents down and tell you know have conversations about boundaries with their parents. <laughs> right, this is a Somali person we're talking about, and the parents looking at them like boundaries, my roof, my rules. Yeah, right. And what some can people, you say are, to some that? people are Sometimes set in their ways, like, but I guess you have to try. I think there's 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 a reason. There's there's like. There's enough to support trying, you know, try. I feel like, I feel like when it comes to certain conversations that people have with their parents, okay, maybe me personally, I don't know, but other people, yeah, they can have certain conversations if they feel like they need to. Right. But obviously you can't dive into deep from the jump. Right. No, I feel no, like no. Things and it might need to be more in, than one conversation. In, in, yeah. It's more than one conversation. You got, you got to make them understand what boundaries is first. Right. I like, don't even, made, the boundaries is one that I, I <laughs> No, but if that person feels like this is something that's, you know... That's true. That's that's something that's close to me. This is something that I need. It's something that I want. Yeah, that's true. Because right? some people's parents do really violate their boundaries. Exactly. They Our parents any. might not. My mum, she doesn't violate my boundaries. I've got my boundaries. Like, my yeah. room's my room. No one comes to my room. Yeah. Do you get it? Some people, they don't even have a room. Some people don't have a door. <laughs> you know, I was watching <laughs> a show the other day, right? And then he was talking about... The boy was talking about how... Like punishment, yeah. He gets his bedroom door taken off. Yeah, and I was just like, bro. I don't agree with that punishment uh, at all. I just think that's too much work. First and foremost, it doesn't take that long to take a door off hinges. That's just long. That's just long. It doesn't take that long to take a door off hinges, but I just don't think. I don't know. I think working with children and just listening to them and seeing their responses to certain things, I've realised that a lot of punishments are abuse Mm. um but i don't think that people necessarily see them as that no and i don't think a parent's uh intention is uh, yeah yeah, yeah. but when you see the impact of some of these things Mm. um i think that yeah like even you know like the shaving of people's heads as punishment like shaving their hair off um that's abuse i think that that like when you're a child and you get forced to come to school with all your hair shaved off, I don't think people's parents realise, like, how horrible that is when you get to school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, not yeah. having your bedroom door. There's a lot of you things You know, that... not having any privacy whatsoever. Having, you know, to get changed and you, you you literally have no door. Or even, like, for me personally, I wouldn't be able to sleep without my bedroom door closed. Mm, I need yeah. my bedroom door closed to go to sleep. So there's lots of different things. But that's what I'm saying. If a child had experienced something like that as a child and as they grow up it 
you know, it's something that they can't forget or forgive. I believe that they should be able to sit their child parent down and say, listen, you know, when you did that to me, it made me feel like this. And especially if you've got younger siblings still in the house suffering that nonsense as well. Like, I, I think you should say something and say, you know, this is how it made me feel. So you might want to think about that moving forward with little Johnny Salmon Angel. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think that people should be able to say that to their parents. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. No, I hear you. There are some... Is that know, is like my extremes. cultural antennas are saying no. Do you know what it is? I hear what you're saying. I feel like, yeah, you know, there's 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 extreme lengths that, you know, some people go to when it comes to punishment, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes those punishments have caused next level of trauma to people, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know... It, it takes them years to maybe, you know, just to come to terms with the fact that it's happened, right? Or, you know, what it's caused them all. Yeah, you know, learn to have the like, courage. Yeah, so I understand that, right? And I feel like if you're in a position where, you know, you're you're um, comfortable enough to have that conversation, right? And you're in a better position in your life where you're willing to have that conversation, by all means, go for it. Because if that's going to make you feel better and if that's going to make you, you know, prosper Maybe get life, closure. Right? Then absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I don't think anyone should... I was talking about from a me personally. I don't know if I would. But Do maybe you know? that's because you because, don't feel like you need to. But that's, but that's, what, I was, that's what I was about to say. I, that might be because I don't feel there's like nothing there's you feel anything like, yeah. that I need to sit my parents down for. In this day and age, I feel like I can just say... Not say what I want to say, but talk to my mum yeah you know what i'm trying to say so it's not like something that has built up that you know in a couple of years that i might need to sit yeah down so with. there's nothing that happened in your childhood that you, you know what i'm trying to say to there about. isn't and as an adult now if something happened you would just say it there and exactly. then exactly rather than waiting for it yeah but yeah i hear you you're right if people feel like you know they want to absolutely and i right? think obviously like that viral video came out last week of those ugandan children uh confronting their dad for cheating on their mum um they called like a family meeting they had both their parents sat there they literally had the dad's phone they had like screen recorded and they had it put up on the television yeah Uh, the text messages that he had been sharing with the woman they called him out they you know they one daughter was talking about like you've completely like ruined my idea of like marriage relationships of men of you know at one point you were my hero and like seeing you doing this is like completely like sickened me kind of thing and just ruined my my view of men etc etc and you know i mean one thing that i don't think no one thing that i know i will never understand is why that's on the internet (laughs) i'm never gonna understand that I'm never going to understand why that recording made it to the internet. Mm. That one for me is an absolute no. It shouldn't be on the internet. Absolutely. Them confronting their dad in that way. Did the mum know before they she sat them she sat down? I don't think she did. Yeah, for me that's a hell no. Yeah. And I get it that people want to protect their mum. But also, I do believe in this is grown folks' business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I believe... I would have told my mum if I saw that mess. And I found out my dad was cheating with a whole... No, no, no. I'm I'm snitching. You tell your mum. But I would leave it there. 100%. Like you said, number one, why that's on the internet, nobody knows. Number two, why was it even being recorded in the first place? Nobody knows. They right? screen recorded like, their dad's text messages for the under- television. <laughs> no, but it's like, it's like you showing your, you know, you're, you're, you're putting on this presentation and I'm now going to record you putting on a presentation of exposing my dad. That part, you know, and that's the thing, like, I'm not going to understand. understand. I'm not going to understand that. I'm right? Not understand. Like, okay, cool, you got these text messages. Just show them to your mum and keep it moving. Yeah, that's like exactly said, what I would have done. Just show keep it moving. I don't understand the need for you to do a presentation. I guess... Th- if your dad maybe has, some part of them wanted to belittle him, right? And you can do that in private. Yeah, the, the, the recording. I'm gonna scrap that because I'm never gonna no, get I'm that. I'm even, never gonna get even that. that. You can do that. In, like, if your dad has made you feel a certain type of way, like you said, you can sit him down and tell him that. I but not in under- front of your mum and with the whole. All of that is unnecessary. All of that is unnecessary. 
yeah. it creates unnecessary drama that you've already got enough to deal with. Well, and the thing is, do you or is it your mom that's gonna have to deal with this? And then you know but, what? Sometimes but, I think people don't understand. Like now that that whole situation's gone viral, there's a good chance that that woman's not gonna leave her husband. Okay. Because a lot of women of that generation don't leave their husbands. And they think that cheating is normal. Or not normal, but they kind of just, they'll deal with it. So yeah. now, you've exposed your whole family. Your mum probably hasn't left your dad. And you're probably all sat in the house together. And the whole community is yeah, chatting you. Absolutely. And and do you know what? You're right. And I feel like what makes the situation even 10 times worse and even more harder is the fact that you've put your mum in the yeah in the situation that was completely unnecessary so embarrassing. it's not nice right and you could have you know said what you needed to say to her and you know play deaf blind whatever you want to play right mm. but it's like like you said she she's probably going to stay with him right and mm-hmm. even like say for example you know just like the mum knew yeah. Right, and she was Imagine protecting she already you knew. guys, or she was trying to, you That's know, an protect thing. somebody. So it's like you've now exposed a whole story out there online, mm-hmm. right? And you've now put your mum in a position where she feels like a ticket. Yeah, she feels violated. Yeah, disrespected. Yeah, and you guys have done that. That's to her. true. There's a good chance that she knew. A lot of women said that they know they knew and that they're. But she was might have, you know been trying to protect them because how many times have you heard stories where you know the mom knows that dad's cheating but you know she wants to you know firm it or whatever it is she wants to hold herself together you know and a lot of the time they just want to protect, protect their protect image the of their family not even the kids a lot of people just trying to protect the image of i've got a good family but they knew the whole look, time and now look what you've done yeah but i do think it's you know and i do even feel kind of bad saying it because it's like the whole time i haven't even had any criticism for the dad obviously what he did was disgusting um but i just feel like they probably thought they were doing bits for their mum but actually you've disgraced her mm. <laughs> like, i don't i don't think that what they did was net i'm not sure i can find any benefits in it for that woman no no i think they when they were doing it they were too caught up in trying to ruin their dad trying to expose yeah, trying him. to finish him it was all about and because they were him. hurt so they were take they were just you're hurt but why are you airing out your laundry like that to the public i don't understand i actually want to know how it made it to the internet like i just don't understand you must have sent it to somebody or you've uploaded it yourself because how I else did he get send that to a friend no, i wouldn't even save that on my cl- that needs to go you wouldn't even record first, first no, yeah, foremost, I wouldn't record okay it. you're having a family dispute it's the family gathering we're having yeah. a family dispute because i don't think i'd put my dad's text messages on when, the tv when, then when lauren exposed her dad with yeah the, with the tv right but it's like but you Can know you what i find crazy their mom felt you seeing them her crazy? husband sending those sweet nothings on the te- on the screen on the television screen and you're hearing this from your kids regardless whether you knew or that's you don't know right sitting there being told this in By front of all your children and the man is just sitting there <laughs> it's yeah. like really and truly though it's like what do you want me to do you want me to walk out you want me to leave him tonight you want me to kick him out right now and the thing is he's not going anywhere just so that you all know he's not gonna leave so next question like and the thing is also on top of that we <laughs> And that's the thing. Sometimes as children, you want to protect your parents, especially your mum, and you think that they can do so much better and you think that they can support, that you want, you like, mum, don't worry, you've got this. But actually, in the grand scheme of things, your mum has to want that for herself, strike one. Mm-hmm. Strike two, when you all grow up and leave her in that house after she's left her husband and she's alone. She ain't got no one, yeah. She, so if she doesn't want that, you have to take, you have to take that on the chin. I just, yeah, I, I'm, I don't feel like that was the best approach. I do believe that we should be able to challenge our parents. Um, however, I don't think that was the right way. Um, <laughs> definitely don't think that was the I right way. I just think that's mad. I, just I would have told my mum and kept it moving. I just want to know, is there a part two? Like, what happened? I, to be honest with you, the community where must you, be chatting Where are they them. now? <laughs> the community must be chatting them. But yes. Uh, I uh, to wrap up to sum up I am all in favour of healthy conversations with our parents that allow us the room and the space to voice uh, our concerns. our concerns and where we may have where they may have had um, a, a negative 
Also, on us. if they've had any positive impact as well. Oh, yeah, you got to tell them of that. Of course, share that, do you know what I mean? Not everything's negative, you know. No, nah, but, you know, we get trained to buy Mother's Day cards and Father's Day cards every year. Yeah, but, you and, know. And right, like, you're the best mum. Come I'm on. Best dad. <laughs> it's like it's like when people say, "What is it that they say?" <laughs> she said, "What is it that they say?" <laughs> what is it that they say? Uh, Mother's Day shouldn't be a day only. You know all of that. It's yeah, the same day. with Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Everything. day yeah, basically, I mean, it, basically, appreciation goes a long way. Yes, and to wrap it up, Islam says that Jannah is under the feet of your mothers. So don't um, kiss your mother's feet. But. That doesn't mean that your mum can abuse you. No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> but remember, you know what I mean? Take the, 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 I mean... The rough with the smooth. There's um, a lot of things. Be, be, be gentle. Our parents are gentle. Are they? Well, my <laughs> All right, cool. And Any, on that note... Let's wrap it up. Uh, yeah, we've been Pirates on the Caribbean. And, like, uh, comment, subscribe. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? We're behind on YouTube, Can't but we're coming there. I know we're getting we're getting there we're getting there subscribe to the YouTube channel and that bye guys <laughs>